All right, guys, we are here and we are live, ready to um, talk about the Belgian Malinois. Today is a great topic. It's one of my favorite topics to talk about, which is dogs. But my favorite dog breed, as you all know, is the Belgian Malinois. No offense to the Duane Mater behind me or Jimmy or, or any other dog, um, Maya or anything. But um, again, I don't know how many of you guys saw my video, the, the last one that called the Belgian Malinois, where I'm trying to take certain breeds, and I started out with the German Shepherd, because obviously the most popular of the ones I'm going to do, uh, German Shepherd, we're going to do Labradors, we're going to do all of them, um, and really talked about who that dog is. In a quick, you know, under 10 minutes, I want to kind of get to the, the crux of it, and I want to address the breed, the history of the breed, and all that. And then later, I'll do more videos for you guys here on what I love about the dog, what I you know, what the challenges are and stuff like that. But right now, I just kind of want to work through the, the top 10 breeds. So we're doing, we did Malinois, German Shepherd. Next is Labradors. Probably do Goldens after that. Maybe do like Border Collies or, or you know, Pit Bulls. Um, some, some of the Mastiff breeds, some of the um, other breeds. But today, I want to talk about the Malinois because it's such a uh, controversial breed is what I really want to, want to say, is that the, the dog is really also misunderstood so people see it they see it in the movies and you know now with today's media hype as soon as you see something you have to have it you got the new iphone got to have it see the new dog you got to have it new car you got to have it and we get caught up in that media frenzy and that that um consumer frenzy and a lot of times it's really not that good um, um gr great great comment there sir um so, you know, so we don't pay attention to the reality of it. And with a dog, get off of there. Goofy, off. Um, you're dealing with a really, really high drive animal, but you're also dealing with an animal that's going to live 10 to 15 years, God willing. And you don't understand that you've got that responsibility, right? It's not a trade-in. You can't just say, oh, you know, I didn't like the pickup truck. I'm going to go get the, uh, you know, the SUV. With a dog, that's a commitment. It should be a commitment for life. And if it's not a commitment for life, there's a character flaw in you. Sorry. Um, so, um, okay, so Jay, if you guys are asking questions about other breeds, I'm not going to address any other breeds because we only have about an hour to do this chat. And if I start addressing other breeds, we'll be here um, way too long. Right? So I can't do that. So it's all going to be about the Belgian Malinois. I, I talked about the history. If you have not seen the video on my video on the belgian malinois it's on youtube if you just search belgian malinois robert cabral it'll come up it'll be probably be your first hit that you'll see i also did the german shepherd when you should watch that one and um i want to talk about what a malinois is i want to address your questions i want to um address your concerns i want to have an open conversation about the breed i want to talk about the difference between show line working line i want to talk about what it's like to live with one the difference between the german shepherd and the malinois what the um, real implications are to training them what makes them great what makes them tough for some people and give you guys as much information about the breed as you can i don't know how many of you guys here are Malinois owners that I don't know. I hope um, I hope not that many. <laughs> um, just kidding. I hope I hope there's a few of you in here who who have Malinois. And um, you know what I'm always happy about when somebody says I watched your video and after watching your video I decided not to get one, right? Because that really tells us that you did decipher the information. You did get. The, the information that you needed to make an informed decision. And a lot of times, you know, YouTube is about just giving you the hype. And, and that's not really what my thing is. I know um, it upsets a lot of people, but I just, I speak my mind and that's just what I've always done. It's what I'll always do. I will not be using foul language today for those of you who, um, Donald, actually, you know, funny, Donald, you just did a, you, you're the guy who just tuned in. You're the guy who I felt so bad for offending because you had your son there. So I'm, I really apologize for that. Um, there was no need for that. I'm, you know, not one way or the other, but anyway. Um, so anyway, what do you got here? Donald, could you please do a live of a pit bull breeds? Or full, yeah, you know what? I'll tell you something. They are, the shelters are full of pit bulls. And... I'm going to do, a, I, did a, I did shelter, when did we do shelter dogs? Was that last week, wasn't it? Yeah, last week we did shelter dogs. And um, I'll do it again. You know, I can adjust. You know, the funny thing is, 
as soon as we talk about shelters being full of pit bulls, everybody says, yeah. And then as soon as some, a, a pit bull bites somebody, they say it's not a pit bull. You know, so it, it's, it's this nutty, whacked out uh, position on the breed. So um, I'm going to start taking some questions here. I've got the uh, beautiful Janet helping me here. Who, with, Without her, I couldn't be doing this, guys, seriously. Um, so this question here comes from San Graham. How do I stop my mouth from barking in car on the way to exercise? She's used to be great in the car, but now not so much. So the reason the dog is barking in the car, and if, if I can kind of um, play psychic here for a minute, is because the dog knows that you're going somewhere fun, right? So, so the dog understands that the sooner you get there, the sooner the fun is going to start. And that becomes a kind of an eroding philosophy to the dog so in other words no matter how long it takes you to get there it's not fast enough it's kind of like your kids saying are we there yet are we there yet are we there yet and no matter how you answer it it just gets worse because then they say well are we there yet now so that's exactly what goes on in the dog's mind and every dog does it like when i drive uh, the dogs when we're coming to the park the dogs start to go oh my god i, I'm, I'm, I gotta get out of the car the more you buy into that the worse it's going to get so just let it just be chill about it. A dog is going to do it. You know, maybe take the car, the dog for a ride somewhere that's not so much fun. Just take the dog for a ride when you go to the store. Obviously, be careful. Leave the dog in the car and get the dog more used to being in the car where there's not always excitement tied to it. Or put a bark collar on the dog. That's another thing that you can do. Um, okay, Donald, I will do that video. I promise. I promise. I'm going to have Janet put that on the list. Um, a video of pit bulls and shelters, honey. We've got to make sure we do that. Okay, Blood Axe. That's a pretty cool name. My three-month-old Belgian Malinois growls and barks at other dogs, especially those who are smaller or hyper dogs when they come near him. But he likes playing with my older dog that is calmer. What can I do about it? So your dog hasn't been properly socialized yet, and that, that's your job, right? So right now the dog is three months old, and the dog needs some socialization. So if you don't socialize this Malinois, it will become reactive to other dogs. That's it. It's as simple as that. So your job at this with this three-month-old dog is to get the dog at a distance from these other dogs, reward calm behavior, correct bad behavior with gentle leash pops, gentle redirections, get the dog to focus on you, build a relationship, build some interactive games that the dog can play like a high five or a sit or a down or you know or whatever when you're alone right first always build the relationship games when you're alone that's critical for the for, for the, the relationship then introduce the distraction don't just go out in front of another dog and start yanking your puppy around because it's gonna it's gonna be abusive and the dog's gonna see that as a negative interaction so that's how i would address that um but, you know, the reason your dog is good with your other dogs is because, one, he was raised with that dog. The dog is bigger and calmer and stuff like that. So the dog has no problem with that. That's, it's as simple as that. Um, I have German Shepherd and Malinois try to breeding them. You know, um, don't try to breed. Just don't, don't try to do it on your own. It's not, it's not your... It, it, unless you really know the complete history of the dogs, the health history and all this stuff, and, and really the temperament of the dog going back a couple generations. Hey, Pete, how are you, buddy? Um, don't do it. Please don't breed. And don't breed a German Shepherd and Malinois together because you're not going to get the best of both breeds. Joshua says, my Malinois seems to be obsessed with his flirt pull. Is this a problem? Yeah, so flirt poles aren't a bad thing. The problem with flirt poles is, <coughs> excuse me, that we use them to check the drive of a dog and we use them to build a little bit more drive in a dog. I don't think you need to build more drive in a Malinois. We use a modified version of a flirt pole where we use like a, it's a, a, a rag with a PVC, um, with rope through PVC to kind of move it around. A true flirt pole is really, you know, a, a, like a feather or some kind of toy in the end of a buggy whip, for those of you who are going to ask what it is. And uh, you don't, don't do it to a, a Malinois. They already have so much drive. It's kind of like people who start to put like laser lights on, on dogs. It's, it's just going to be a disaster. Don't, don't, don't do it. Um, okay, we already got that one, the one growling. Okay. Um, so 
And what do you got here? You got somebody here, Ridiori idea. When we play fetch with the ball, she collects it, brings it back, but she stays about a meter away and most of the time circle around me with the ball. Well, okay, so the problem is, and you got a question about a Malmo with kids. I want to address that one too, Janet, with the, with the dog with the kids, how are Malmo with kids. Um, you need to um, understand the retrieve. So you need to watch my videos on that because I can't really explain it to you now. But the re, you know, dogs, and Janet and I were just talking about this because our friend Jeremy had a really great statement that I always reflect back to now that it's the, especially retriever, it's a, their natural instinct to retrieve things, right? That's just what they do. It's not their natural instinct to deliver it to hand. That, that's where the training comes in, that, that you've, you must train the dog. It's not a natural instinct. It's natural for them to chase it, pick it up, and bring it around you, but why would they give it to you? What's the re Think about that for a second. What's the reason for the dog to give it to you? Um, the question of Malinois with kids, you know, they're fantastic with kids, but, and the but is the big part, you have to consider that a Malinois is a high prey driven dog. And this doesn't matter if it's a show line, a working line, or whatever, or a pet line. The Malinois itself is a high prey driven dog. That doesn't fare well with really small children who are running around making high pitched noises when the dog wasn't socialized at an early age or exposed to these things at an early age. And that's where the critical element comes in, you know, where people say, oh, I'm going to breed my dogs. Well, when you're breeding something like a Malinois, there's an immense responsibility that comes into it. I was just talking with Goofy's breeder, and there are protocols, there are tests that they do, there are socializations that they do, because the dog needs to learn how to accept these things, how to do these things, right? That's really, really important. Okay, two of these go together, sort of, kind of, Janet says. Okay, Doug says, how do you compare a pure Malinois to a KNPV dog? Love your videos because of you. I became a dog trainer. Oh, that's very kind of you. Thank you so much. Um, so I don't know, I don't understand your question because a pure Malinois is just a breed, and KNPV is a sport, right? It, it's a very, very rough, rough sport. Um, that, it, you know, it's, it's, it's a great sport. I mean, it's, it's probably the, maybe the hardest hitting of the bite sports, but um, maybe you're saying, how do I compare putting a Malinois in there? I mean, it's really a, a sport that was made for the Dutch Shepherd or the Malinois. I do, I do think it's a great sport for them. Any sports that you kind of do with a dog subjects them to injuries, right? I talk about that with Janet. I, I, I tell her all the time to watch Dwayne um, with agility, and she's like super, super, responsible and careful you know she didn't jump him that high before he was a year old but you must understand that you know KMPV is a hard sport you know I mean if you look at IPO or IGP they call it now you've got the long bite super dangerous for the dog super super dangerous um, um, let's see what's this Gavin says Dutch Shepherds close enough to Belgians to compare this video to I know they're much closer to Belgians than they are to German yeah and that's the absolute truth Dutchies are much closer to um, Malinois than to German Shepherds German Shepherds are world apart you know it's it's definitely Dutch and Dutchess and Malinois are going to be the closest of the two they still have their differences um, I think you know Dutchies have more I mean, I don't know. I think they're more steady. Malinois are a little bit more higher, uh, wired tighter, so, so to speak. Um, but that's, um, that's the difference. Thank God I got Janet here doing all this for me. How would I do this without her? She just hands me the phone. She does a screenshot of, of you guys' thing. It circles it. It's so creative, and she kind of figures the whole thing out. Ajay says, my Malinois female puppy, nine month old, having high ball or tug drive, but low to moderate food drive. Please help. Well, that's not nothing you, you need help with. First of all, I would maybe not feed the dog as much in the bowl, and I would feed the dog more from the hand. That will increase the food drive, because all dogs have food drive, right? All dogs need to eat. The reason we don't see the food drive is because we're either overfeeding the dog, we're not paying attention to them, and we're not making them work for the dog, for the, for the food. And if you don't do that, then you're kind of cutting the dog short on you know, it's, it's ability to work, it's ability to relate, to function, to do all these things. You must, you must make the dog earn its food. If it's in the wild, and, and believe me, the DNA still goes back to that primal state. People say, well, they've been domesticated for thousands of years, and that's true. But their DNA still goes back to hunting for food. We still desire to, you know, to conquer as, as people. I was going to say men, I would have gotten in trouble. We like to accomplish things, right? 
Um, ben says, my Malinois is seven months old. Jumping, jump training is too early for her. It's, you know what you should start doing at that six month window? You can do very, very low, low, low jumps. Teach the dog early on. I mean, I think Janet was doing it with Dwayne when he was like three months old, just kind of like stepping over things to get them some spatial awareness and some biomechanical things. You know, you can put a jump all the way down and just have the dog jumping over it. That's not a big deal for the dog, but you can't start pushing the dog. It's the impact. It's you're, you're just trying to protect the dog, dogs, the dog during the um, time between the growth plates are going to close. That's going to be really, really important. And Scott says, what's your opinion on having Malinois family pets as in not intended for work? You know, it's a big, big difference between having one of these dogs a pet. I, I, I don't think it's a great pet. I really don't. I mean, I've had Goofy for over 10 years and I mean, I love him to death. I, I mean, my world would be completely rocked without him. But as a pet, I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I would not know. That's just my thing. I wouldn't do it. No. Um, okay, let's see here. Janet did not circle this one. For a two year old female, Mally, how much exercise is too much? Is it normal after 10 minutes of 120% because that's her nature? She mentally still driven, but body, yeah, it's totally normal. Um, you got to read your dog, right? So that's why we always say, you know, a Malinois needs to be um, owned, handled, and trained by somebody who kind of understands dogs. It, it, I'm not saying you shouldn't have a Malinois. Like, I hate when people say, oh, Malinois should only be owned by a person who is a, you know, a military person. I, I think that's BS. Um, but I do think that you need to understand, you, you need to have, a, you need to be a little dog savvy, right? And a lot of people are honest. I mean, I didn't know this, but Janet shared with me a couple of days ago that she originally thought about getting a Malinois and she had Boz and she was going to get one and she researched it like she does everything. And she realized, you know what? That's too much dog for me. I can't do it. She, I, she just said, I cannot do it. And that's brilliant, right? The, the, the idea that you understand your limits is what makes people wise. The people who don't, who are constantly shooting over their heads, they never get anywhere, right? Because they're constantly cleaning up the mess they make. Um, question here from Dennis. Mal is now 10 weeks, shaping going well. How should I start training my Mal to leave my one and a half year old alone at times? Husky is extremely nice and will not tell the pup to stop. Is Okay, so I don't understand this. To leave my one and a half year old alone, is the one and a half year old the husky, or is that is that how you read that? Yeah, the one and a half is the husky. He's extremely nice and will not tell the pup to stop, and then he's had enough. So um, you need to structure it. It's kind of the same thing I did with um, our dogs. You know, when Goofy was you know picking on the dog, I tell him, okay, that's it, stop it, and I grab him by the scruff and I go, hey, knock it off, because it's important that it's enough for me. Remember that. When puppies, young puppies, when they're still whelping and going through this, you know, initial phase up until the time they're eight weeks old, and then they're they're parted out and sold or, or given to new homes, the mom does a lot of the correcting. I mean, the puppies will yelp if they bite too hard or do this or do that, but it's the mom who's like, "Hey, knock it off!" You know, it's like two kids playing in the house, and you know, you're just coming home from work and you're tired, and you say, "Hey, you know what? It's enough. It's enough. Just stop it." You are allowed to do that. Okay, here's another one from Dennis. Do you think a Malinois could be suitable as a PTSD service dog? Wow. If you have PTSD, it'll increase having a Malinois. That's, that's just my opinion. That's just, just my opinion. There, you know, PTSD, you kind of need a dog that's going to ease your level of stress because you have post-traumatic stress disorder. That means you don't deal with stress well. And I... Huh? You know, yeah, I mean, Janice whispering in my ear, Labrador. And really, that is kind of the right dog or a really low drive German Shepherd or, you know, or Golden Retriever or something like that. Malinois are great dogs for the right purpose. Like I wouldn't want to take, you know, a Golden Retriever out and do, do protection dog sports with it. You know, I mean, I just don't, don't, um, don't do that. I have a Malma who's one year old. He still gets distracted easily while training. What should I suggest to do? Train. You just need to. You need, Malinois, high drive dog. Any high drive dog is going to get um, 
you know, it distracted because that's what prey drive is. Prey drive is this constant looking around, looking around, looking around, looking around. Super, super important. Um, Lazi, how big is the difference in prey drive between a show line and a working line? Okay, so in non in non Malinois, like in German Shepherds, it's it's day and night. It's the it's literally like 180 degrees. It's the opposite end of the spectrum. With Malinois, I wouldn't say it's that great. Uh, working line Malinois are structured. I mean, I think it's one of the only breeds really where a show line dog can do working line stuff. Now, I'm not saying they can be um, military dogs or or civil dogs or police dogs or anything like that, but they can do it. They can do the they can perform the bite they can you know they can do the obedience they can do it now the ideal is like i said in my video is a dog that's kind of bred for both you want like a, i mean like i don't want a crazy high drive working line mal i've worked with them you know you don't want to live with them but they're fun so you kind of have to um gauge yourself but but in the working line show line they can still do everything like the pure working lines can never enter a show ring they'll be completely you know laughed out of the show ring whereas a complete working a uh, uh, show line can do some stuff but you know they're the really hardcore stuff the dog's not going to do like a, you know putting crazy pressure on them so i think it's a long answer for a short question um I, I talked about increasing food drive before, so if, if you want to increase food drive, watch this video. I, I just, I, I don't want to be rude, but I can't answer the same question twice. Which one is it? Laura? No? Gavin. Okay, Gavin says, can you believe Janet has two phones? But so do I. What's the best way to socialize a Malinois with kids? Allowing a child close ever for the first time is my biggest fear hurdle my dog in the future. So yeah, that's a great question. But a couple things. One is you should make sure that your dog was socialized early on by the breeder, right? That And this is where the critical pieces come in. Oh, I got a really nice Malinois. You got a really nice Malinois. Let's breed them. There's an immense responsibility in breeding because those these initial phases, you want to know who the father is, the genetics of the father. You want to know the genetics of the mother. You want to, in these early phases, when the puppy is just a few weeks old, you want little children around the dog. You want people of different ethnicities around the dog. You know, people always say, oh, my dog's racist. It doesn't like black people, doesn't like Hispanic people, doesn't like Asian people, whatever. Well, that's not the fault of the dog. It's because it wasn't exposed to those different people. And the same thing with children, right? Now, children come in different sizes. So there's babies, then there's toddlers, then there's kids, I think they call them. I don't know. Sometimes they're off leash. And, you know, it, it stimulates the dog's prey drive. The dog will nip. So, you know, it's a hard thing. But once the dog has been socialized in an early age, then, you know, keep the dog in a crate, keep the dog under control. As a puppy, it's going to nip. So if your child is neurotic with dogs, a Malinois is the wrong dog. Sorry. Okay, v Vidmar. What is your take on the rescue Malinois? Also, can they live with other pets such as dogs? Roughly 35 pounds. Thanks for the best podcast ever. Should a shepherd be better suited? Y yeah, I mean, look, rescue Malinois is, again, it's one of those, it's the, one of the rare breeds. My friend Rich, who I did IPO with for years, used to say, that the Malinois was one of the only dogs you could take out of a shelter and still probably has the drive to do protection or, you know, or obedience work and stuff like that. So rescue Malinois can be a really, really nice dog. Malinois are notoriously going to be not be dog friendly. It's just, you know, people say pit bulls aren't dog friendly. Well, neither are Malinois. They're not the, the friendliest of dogs with other people. Now, my friend Danny's got, you know, seven or seven, or I don't even know how many he's got. I'm sure if you're watching this, Danny, you can put a comment down below. But um, he's a fantastic, in my opinion, one of the best trainers, right? So, he, yeah, he can keep it going. I've got Goofy with a ton of dogs. He's not aggressive. But as a no, notoriously, because of their increased prey drive, they're not going to be that friendly with other dogs. So a German Shepherd might be better suited. Um, but just, you know, choose it based on the temperament of the dog, not, on, um, not just on the breed. Polo nugget, or oh, pollo, not polo, it's pollo, like chicken. 
chicken nugget. Says, any tips that I can do to help with separation anxiety for two-year-old female Malinois? If it's a two-year-old dog, you got your work cut off. It's a lot, a lot of work. Two-year-olds are, are really at the end of that phase where you can kind of start doing things. But, you know, separation anxiety is something that, you know, first of all, Malinois are not good to be left alone. That's another reason why it's not a really great breed for somebody who, you know, works full time or, you know, apartment dwellers or something like that. And every time I say something like that, then somebody says, well, I've got one. I live in an apartment in New York City and I work eight hours a day and my dog's great. And that's fine for you. But in general, it's not a good thing. So I'm talking about basic generalities unless I can address a specific issue. So the basic generalities, they're, they're not good with that. And separation anxiety, you know, read my article on separation anxiety. You got to do a lot of work, a lot of activity, have people check in on the dog, get the dog used to it in slow durations. Don't let the dog see that you're suddenly just going to leave and then and then not come back. Victoria says, could you advise on structure for a five-month-old puppy raising it at home with a seven and nine-year-old? Please tell me if they're dogs or people, seven or nine-year-olds. Okay, Janet's wise. She says it's kids. Um, well, it, the, the puppy is young, so the puppy should be crated a lot, should be taken out on leash a lot. In other words, don't give the dog the long enough you know enough rope so to speak to make its own decisions because its own decisions are going to be bad decisions that's really really critical right you don't want the dog making decisions you want the dog making decisions based on the structure you're imposing on so if you're letting the dog run around chase the kids around nip at the kids that's the dog's nature the five-month-old puppy especially a malinois so you don't want to give the dog that option so if you put the dog in a crate, the dog sees the kids, the dog starts to chill out and not have that crazy prey drive towards them, you get a lot easier position. You get a lot easier um, decisions for the dog to make. But you got to go slow and you got to do a lot of structure. And, and by the way, there's no really stupid questions. We're not, we're not saying anything. There's no stupid questions because you know what? You're asking questions and the fact that you're asking the question if anybody criticizes you for asking a question even if it's a stupid question but it's not a stupid question i just said there's no stupid but if somebody would propose it's a stupid question you're at least asking it and clarifying it what's stupid is if you don't ask it you make a mistake so um, remember that what about prey drive to cats how to train our dog that she won't run towards them i don't allow her but she is pulling on a leash how do i correct that well you know, prey drive between dogs and cats dates back to, I think, when God created them on the fifth or sixth or seventh day, I don't know, when, he got, when he made them. But that's just a really normal thing for, for, for them to do. If the dog has a, an intense amount of prey drive, it's probably not going to go away. It's probably only going to kind of um, settle in at some point. But the dog must be in a crate and must see the stimulus over and over again and know that that's just normal. The dog has to accept. In other words, when the dog sees, or the wild dog, sees a rabbit running and it chases it, kills it, and eats it, that reinforces that, oh, okay, chasing and killing it is a good thing. Just like if the cat chases the cat, uh, the dog chases the cat, then they will start enjoying that game. And that's part of the enjoyment. It's hard to get enjoyment out that's why people have a hard time getting off of drugs or alcohol or any cra crazy addictions they have because there's a, an enjoyment to it they have to see that it's that it's detrimental and that's kind of what you want the dog to see that first of all it's just there second of all if he does it you should correct him and third that just letting it be there and not interacting with it is is the best decision two questions here from coffee I just came in, so sorry if I asked a question that's already been asked. I only have worked with German Shepherds, so what do you think the upside and downside of a Malinois versus German Shepherd? That's a great question. So the, the Malinois is a lot higher drive of a dog. So it's, it's more, in my opinion, it's more fun to train. It can be trained more through rewards and interaction and repetition, stuff like that. German Shepherds kind of get set in their ways. They just kind of do their thing. They're, they're a harder dog. They're um, a more steadfast kind of a dog. I mean, I've trained both, so I can tell you that um, a, a German Shepherd, you kind of like kind of got to 
boom, 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 this is what we're going to do. And then once they get it, that's just what they do. A Malinois is kind of like it's a game. Well, let's try it this way, let's try it that way, let's try it this way, let's try it that way. And they'll keep pushing and pushing and pushing. Where a German Shepherd, at, at some point, they just go, I'm not doing anymore. They, my, my would do, just run over and lay in the shade. And that's a typical German Shepherd. Um, David says, is there any behavioral difference between a Belgian Malinois and a Dutch Shepherd? I think I addressed that, and that is that I think the, the, the Dutch Shepherd is a little bit more serious Malwa, I think it's a little bit more playful. That's my opinion, and you'll hear that different from different people. Um, how do they compare to German shepherds? And lots of love from Iran. Thank you for that. I appreciate that from Iran. Um, a lot of friends in the Middle East, and I really appreciate you guys being here. Um, compared to a German shepherd, it's it's really a completely different dog. A German shepherd is, you know, a more serious. Uh, lower drive dog. Even the high drive German shepherds are not as high drive as high drive Belgian Malinois. Um, Adam says, can I pick up a Malinois puppy to time him out when overexcited and aggressively playing? I mean, I don't know what you mean um, by that. Like pick him up. Like, I mean, I, I, I don't pick up dogs to time them out. I mean, I put them in a crate or something like that. And I try to do it before they, um, before they get to that crazy state. You always want to get them just before that. And Dennis, I just saw there's a super chat there. For, thank you very, very much for that. Um, okay, sorry, Frank. That's right. On the fourth day, God did create the animals. You're absolutely correct. I was kind of trying to make a joke like God made the cats and dogs on a different day, but you're right on the fourth day. The first day, he separated the firm, firmament, but we're not going to a biblical thing. But if we were, it would be an interesting topic like I had the rabbi on one time. So thank you for clarifying that. Marcin, dear Robert, thank you for this live. Out fifteen was our fifteen was old. Our fifth, our fifteen week old Malinois. Just, I'm sorry, if you write it wrong, it just takes me a second to kind of get into the proper thing. Our fifteen week old Malinois just started to nip on our ankles during walks. How to cope with it? Just that's it. You just answered your own question. How do you cope with it? You just have to cope with it. That's what puppies do. That they just do that. Is there any advice you have, Janet? No, Janet has no advice either. So, um, If you get a shelter dog, is there a way to tell if it's a German Shepherd or Malinois mix? Yeah, that's going to be the most common thing, right? So, And you don't even know if it's a German Shepherd lab mix or German Shepherd, you know, other Shepherd mix. Um, you can do a DNA test. I mean, I don't really know if they're that accurate. I mean, I think they are. I mean, I think they've got them more and more refined. Or you could find out that way. But... Don't go by the breed, right? If you're getting a rescue dog, it's a very noble thing to do. It's very cool. But don't go by, I'm going to rescue it because it's a Belgian Malinois, or I'm going to rescue it because it's this or that. Really hunker down and see if you connect with this dog. Because if you connect with the dog, it doesn't matter if it's a Belgian Malinois. It doesn't matter if it's a German Shepherd. It doesn't matter if it's a, you know, a dingo. It, you... Or a dachshund, Janet said. It could be a dachshund. What a great dog if you got a dachshund out of the shelter, like Bosman. Um, so, yeah, you could do a DNA test, but I don't think that's the answer you're looking for. Um, Joshua says, Constant, my Malmore constantly plays with my brother's healer pup. Which behavior do we correct? The mal playing too rough or the healer who gets really defensive? Both, right? Both. It's a great question. My friend Lewis and I used to do play groups together. And we had a philosophy that if two dogs got in a fight, they both got in trouble. Even the dog that didn't start the fight, right? Because he may have given some stink eye to the other dog. He may have just, like, you shouldn't even be there. Like, my philosophy on dog aggression is that no dog should be aggressive to another dog. That's philosophy one. And philosophy two is if a dog is becoming aggressive to you, get out of there. Don't be there. So if two dogs have an issue, both get corrected. That's it. Right now, of course, people are going to scream, and it's not fair, it's not this, it's not that. You're dealing with wild animals, right? That's it. You're dealing with animals. And animals don't communicate through explaining stuff. Animals communicate by pressure, physical, spatial pressure. And if you can't do that, if you don't have the ability to do that, then I'm sorry, then, you've, then you shouldn't have that animal. You got another one out here for me? Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Ridi or ridi. I don't know what that means. 
Ridior. Ridior D, it's two names. Because my Malinois has such a high drive, how do I stop play with a ball? She keeps searching for it and won't rest even after she's tired. Watch my video on ending the game of tug and you'll see. There's a certain way to do it. And again, you know, I, I'm going to give you a quick uh, plug here. The, the YouTube channel is full of a thousand plus videos between um, videos that are educational or teaching or, you know, philosophical, anything. There's tons of videos. Please watch this video. It'll tell you um, what to do when Mel becomes aggressive and angry when I try to put him in an outside kennel. Well, you've got to control your dog, right? Your dog has no right to be aggressive to you. None. You shouldn't allow that. You need to structure the relationship with your dog to prevent and block that. And for those of you who are going to ask the next question, how do you do that? You do that through fair interaction, uh, through reward and consequence. And you must be fair. You must be fair. You can't... Hey, lie down. You can't be a bully to your dog, but you can't be a pushover either. It's a fine line. Right? I taught karate to kids for years, years. I taught it to adults for years too. But when I taught karate, I didn't win my point by beating up the kids or beating up the people. I won my point by being fair and explaining things and showing that, you know, there's a great line in Schindler's List that, uh, that Oscar Schindler says to Amon Gerth. And he says, true power is in having the ability to do harm and not doing it. And he was doing that when Goethe was shooting the Jews in the, uh, in the camp. And he said, true power comes from having that power, but not using it. Right? So you must have that power over your dog. You don't have to be a bully to him, but you must, must, must have that power. Bezab says, or Bezab, I did rescue the seven-month-old Malmo, but he is too weak. Do I have enough time to fix him with good food and care? Well, yeah, I mean, I think you do. I mean, I, I, good food is, is, and good care is, is what, if the dog has a chance and you have this dog, please, please give him that chance, right? Give him the chance to be healthy. Good, good food. I'm going to do a special on the food that we feed our dogs. You know, we, um, I've, tr I've fed so many different foods. I've fed raw and I've fed kibble and I've fed home cooked and I've fed this and I've fed that. And our dogs now are on this diet that is better than, better than we eat, essentially. Um, but yeah, good nutrition. Man, good nutrition is so important for people and animals. And it's not about being a vegan or about a, being a keto or being a this or being a that. It's just sensible eating. I'm not going to tell Janet about the meringues I baked last night. Kofi. Okay, we already got a question from Kofi. I'm trying to get as many people as we can, but oops, um, here we go. This says, sorry, but I didn't ask my question good, but I want to train IPO, IGP, and I want to know what is the good and bad difference between Malinois and the GSD. Okay, I got your question. Now. Good side from the good. Okay, so if you want to do IPO or IGP, I would suggest you get a working line German Shepherd. This sport, IPO and IGP, was designed, it was built, Schutzhund, was built as the sport for the German Shepherd. <clears throat> now, Malinois will do really, really well in it, but the sport was designed for the German Shepherd. Um, when you look at things like the ring sports, those were designed for the Dutchies and the Belgian Malinois. So, like, you don't want to do a German Shepherd in those sports. You can, but it's not as great. So that's my question for that. And then Winter Rivon. I rescued an 18-month-old Belgian Malinois that was dog and people aggressive. He's better with people now, but would he ever be dog friendly? Can you offer advice on how to get him to at least ignore other dogs? Well, you're going to get him to ignore other dogs because you're going to put structure on him, right? There's going to be an, an immense reward for paying attention to you and an immense consequence for paying attention to the other dogs or being aggressive. I mean, if you got him to not be people aggressive, kudos to you. I mean, really, kudos. That's so, it's fantastic. <clears throat> he just needs to know, first of all, he may never be the dog that can play with other dogs. I can tell you that if he's dog aggressive because he's going to have a trigger. But dog aggression can totally be managed. I think it's easier to manage dog aggression than people aggression. So if you've done it with people, get the dog to understand that there's a consequence for bad behavior. And you just want the dog to be, don't, you don't want the dog to be friendly with dogs. You want him to be neutral to other dogs. And to get that, you have to build trust with the dog. The dog must listen to you and must see that when he listens to you, 
Nothing bad happens. Igor says, my five-month-old Malinwa won't give me the ball back. She does everything I ask her before throwing, but when she comes back with it, she won't give it back. So you're going to need to put a long line on the dog. You're going to need to play two, two things. One is you're going to need to play two ball with the dog. And this is all, there's, there's I, I've got videos on that. I got a video on that. That's my, my famous last words. I got a video on that. Um, you must get the ball back, right? The game must start. You must control the game. You must do obedience before the dog gets the, the toy. You must have a second toy. You must use a long line. You must correct the dog for not giving it back. Easy. This goes out to uh, dog trainer Cebu again. In, in training a Malinois for IGP, how do you balance obedience and protection training? Also, will doing too much obedience lower? Sorry. Very, 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 very good question. So I'm going to answer that for you. So when a dog does protection, you are relying on the dog's natural defensive drives, right? You want the dog to have... Now, now again, remember, um, and this is what a good friend of mine, Danny, told me also, that you know this is a total game for the dog. You, you must, must, must understand that the protection in the sport ring or the sport arena is a game for the dog. He has to have a natural aggression. And my good friends, you know, Avi and, and Eric and, and Oscar and all these people, who and, and, and Danny, who's amazing, um, who do these sports, will tell you that too much obedience on the dog is going to curb their naughty side, right? That, that defensive side where they're really going to punch in, they're really going to drive through. If there's too much obedience, then the dog starts to... Th do what, and Goofy did it with me, right? I mean, I'm one person who really, I prefer to have more obedience on the dog because I do so many different things with the dog. If I was only going to do IPO or somewhere or ring sport, I would let the dog have a lot more freedom early on and let the dog be a little bit naughty because that naughtiness gives them the permission to push through, for example, the need of when the guy's yelling or what, or there's when, when they're using, um, sticks on the dog or, or, or anything, anything they're putting on the dog, the dog has to work through that. And if there's obedience, he's going to think, oh, this is a test. I shouldn't do it. Right. So, yeah, so that's a, that's a tough one. I'm the John Wick of dog training. Somebody said that's very funny. Okay. By the way, you guys, Jana is doing like a, an amazing. I was thinking when I was coming down here today, how could I even do this without her in my life? I mean, and you know, if you have a good partner, really buy them flowers, you know, hug them and kiss them a lot, do something nice for them because without Jana, I wouldn't be doing any of this. Um, Robert, how normal is it for Malwa to bite on leaves, plants at three and a half months old? Totally normal, completely and utterly, one hundred percent normal. It's just the dog acting out it's like a baby sucking on its toes or fingers just what they do and then lousy says do most malinois in the shelter come from craigslist i assume that because a responsible breeder would sell this only to a responsible owner that's exactly my position now i don't know i can't prove that for a fact i can't say um you know that that's a hundred percent accurate but i will say that it's um more than likely, right? People who sell their dogs on Craigslist or, or on a street corner or even through the newspaper or something like that and don't do some kind of a basic check on the dogs. I remember I was at a, at a, at a, um, at a trial once for I don't know, IPO or something and somebody said, oh I'm, oh, I'm trying to buy a Malinois from somebody and the person wants to know my address and he said, screw them, I'm paying for the dog. I wouldn't, I wouldn't give them my address. And I was thinking, man, you would never get a dog from me because I would be like at your house, you know, looking in your cabinets. I mean, I, I, first of all, which is why I would be a horrible breeder because I would never, ever be able to give up my dogs. But um, yeah, that's, I don't even know where that came from. Joseph says, hi, Robert, I have a three-month-old Mal that has always been outgoing and confident. Recently, a large dog ran over him a couple of times and since he is fearful of other dogs. Yeah, so that's going to happen. So everybody, if you have a Malinois, please, please learn from Joseph's mistake, right? You must protect your young puppy because that's an easy way to make a confident dog not confident because two things happen. One is it's a bad experience from another dog. And two, and I'm, I don't, I'm not trying to bust your chops, but you let your dog down, right? You weren't there to protect your dog. If, you know, dogs would come up to Goofy when he was young. I would say, hey, no. And I did the same with Dwayne. Like if, if a dog gets in my dog's face, I'm in it. I'm in that dog's face. I do that 
all the time. That's it. I, I don't allow a dog to make a decision or to take advantage of my dog. Never. Never. It would be the same if I, was, if I was, uh, had a child. And somebody asked before if I have children. I have a stepdaughter, but I don't have any... Um, I, I never gave birth personally. I couldn't give birth personally. I'm a man. I, I identify as a man. I'm a man. Willie Bobo says, is littermate a true phenomenon? I think you mean littermate syndrome. Considering bringing a Malinois into a family with a German shepherd, don't do it. Worst thing you'll do. Because you're going to be then asking me for advice. I get so many people who ask me for advice. Oh, I have two dogs who are the same age. I don't, even want, I don't even take them as clients. I'm honest to God. If you've made that big of a mistake, it's just not. And everybody has an excuse. Oh, but they're really good together. Oh, they're really this or they're really that. My friend Tony, I don't know if, you, if you're listening, Tony, just got two dogs. You know, they're, they're litter mates. Oh, well, the breeder said the da-da-da-da-da. There's no worse thing. I'll tell you the two worst things you can do right now. Okay, here's two. Two worst things you can do. One, littermate syndrome, getting littermates. Two, getting a singleton. Right? It's really, really hard. They're not well-balanced and socialized dogs. The littermates are always going to bond to each other, much more so to you. You have to use a lot of pressure to get them to focus on you. Then singletons haven't been properly raised. And even worse yet, there were dogs that were raised by people and not by another dog. It's very, very hard for them. Very hard. This goes out to herds. What is the ideal age to bring another dog into the household? Should they both be puppies or after two years, for example? Okay, so I just talked about that. So you don't, you do not want dogs coming in together, right? You don't want them coming in at the same age. I, my position, and, and again, some people will do it after a year or so. You have to have good, good, good questions, Right, to add, you have to have a good training on the dog. I mean, Tony, uh, Anthony, you just made the funniest comment. I like. That. Did you see what Anthony just wrote? You'll see. It's going to stroke up in a minute. That's, that's brilliant. Um, you, you you have to have good control over the first dog before you bring the second dog in. If not, you're going to have two young puppies running around. I mean, a year, eighteen months in that window, I think you'd be fine. Jeff, I'm I'm sure you have a singleton. I, I and again, I it, I'm not. Look, I'm not God. Right? I'm giving you my advice, and, and, and the people, you might have a singleton, and it might be the greatest dog in the world, but I'm giving you the advice that, in general, a singleton is not a good choice. That's it. And um, litter mates is, is worse. Alan says, hi, Robert, greetings from Argentina. Nice, and thank you for coming from Argentina, because that's South America, right? Argentina's in South America. We like Argentina. We like all of South America. Any advice for raising Malinois puppies, it would be my first time. Well, um, yeah, you got your work cut off for you. I mean, please, if, you're, if you guys are here and you're not members of my membership section, you should definitely consider going to robertcabral.com and joining that because there's long, detailed lessons. Lessons here on YouTube are short. For example, the video I just put up this morning, it's like a six-minute video. That video in my member section is a 30-minute video. So there's a lot more details. And just hunker down for a year and you know follow the guidelines follow the lessons you need to train you need to interact but you need to have the time that's the critical thing if you're working eight hours a day it's a tough one and then florian my mallow is very well leash trained and good on walks but when she has the slightest hint that a ball is involved at some point no collar command or correction stop or pulling that's a malinois Right? That's just, they're ball driven. So you need to teach the dog. And this is something that is really hard. And when I get a puppy at some point, I'll, I'll do a video on this. But you need to understand that the dog must understand a leave it command. It's like the bite, right? The, the person is standing in front of them and they run up and bark and bark and bark and bark and bark. But they're not allowed to bite until you give them a bite command. So we teach that initially with toys. Like I should be able to lay five toys on the ground and tell the dog, leave it, come with me. Okay, go get it. Come back, leave it. You, you have to have control over your dog, right? If you don't have control over your dog, don't ha you can't have that dog. That's why I'm saying Malinois are great dogs. They're great dogs, but they're just not for everybody. And n no dog is for everybody. There's certain people who shouldn't own dogs. Maybe they should own gerbils or something. That's Maya yawning in the background. Heather says, is it normal for my five-month-old Mal to shy away from other dogs at the dog park? 
They want to play with her and she throws herself on the floor, belly up. Heather, do me, you, you yourself, and your Malinois favor and don't take your dog to a dog park. It's not the right dog for a dog park um, because right now she's putting her belly up because she's trying to show that that's a defensive drive. Like, hey, 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 I don't want nothing to happen. And then at some point, something's going to happen and she's going to lay into one of the dogs. Malinois, first of all, no dogs are really good dogs for a dog park. I hate dog parks. And I'm the guy who, in the LA City Shelter Systems, developed their playgroup program and protocol. And it worked really well when I did it or when I had guys like Anthony and Pete and me and Lewis doing it. We had up to 17 pit bulls in the yard, no problems. As soon as you get some yo-yo in there who's going to you know, do it and, and, and you know, bring in dogs that are above the capacity of the person who's handling the yard to handle, it's going to be a problem. No dog parks. AJ says, my, another question is, what is engagement meant in dog training and how do I build engagement with my nine-month male or female? Engagement is the dog paying attention to you, right? Is the dog checking in with you and interacting with you. That is engagement. He's engaging you to play a game, to do something, to look to you for direction. And we teach that by hand feeding the dog. The dog must look to us for all things good and all things consequential. And if they don't, then you've got a problem, right? You, you, you must control the dog. And that's one of the things, you know, Jan and I had to talk about, it. like, you know, and I don't want to get into the long details of it, but, you know, a dog if it's raised by someone very physically strong, and I mean, it could be a man or a woman, by the way, the dog will have a certain behavior. Now, once the dog gets to a certain age, if it hasn't had that, it's going to need to know that there's a physical implication for a behavior that you don't want, a, a, a disobedience or a mistake. And if the dog doesn't see that, it's very hard to teach the dog that. And that's where sometimes e-collars and stuff like that come in. Michael Gray says, great podcast. How good is it to go back and socialize my Malinois with his dad and mom and one little brother? He lives with me, but I'm still in touch with the breeder. You know, I'll tell you, I did that with Maya, right? Maya um, was bred and the puppies are all, it was a client of mine who bought Maya and then he bred her and then he had me train her and then um, a friend, th th there was two partners, Herb and, and, and Jerry, and then they gave me Maya. And, you know, I would go back in the, in, 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 and reintroduce Maya to her puppies. But, you know, Maya's a dominant dog. She's very tough with them and stuff like that. And it, it was okay. I don't think there's any need. It's not like they need visitation or custody or anything like that. It's, it's nice, but it's nice for you, right? That, that, it's not something I would, I wouldn't, I, I don't think you should do it. I mean, you know, it's, let them have friends. I mean, it's, it's, it's just as good. I mean, I know that's not the answer you want, but... I'm sorry, that's just the way it goes. This is a continuation. Okay, there's a continuation here. That's not what I meant. I'm sorry. But remember, this is a very you know, one-sided thing. You send me something and then I talk. But um, she is absolutely perfect while playing. It is when she sees me taking the ball or smells the ball, she will pull like hell. Oh, went on the way to the place where we play. Okay, but, but um, so yeah, so, so she's excited to get there, right? So then... You're dealing still with control that you should be able to take the ball out, show it to her, and then say, okay, now we're going to heal. Show it to her, now down. You, you must be able to control the dog through the stimulus. And if you can't control the dogs through the stimulus, then you're going to have a dog that you can't control. My God, it's, it's 10.55. We, I've got to wrap this up, guys. I, this is the best chat we've had. This is the most interactive, fun chat that I've ever done. I mean, it's really great. Listen, I hope, I, I've got to cut it here because I've got five minutes. I've got to get into the member section, and I still have to shower and shave. That's what they say. They used to say that. We don't shower and shave anymore. We, we go this way. Now we're in COVID. So anyway, listen, guys, thank you so much. I'll, I'll do this chat again. We should do a part two to this. This was a really, really good chat. I got to stop it. If you're a member of my membership section, then um, head over there. Go to the membership section. The, the, the link is up there. Please check in there. Thank you so much for, um, for tuning in. I really appreciate you guys very much. Um, share this channel with other people. You know, we, we have such great content here. Um, thank you to Janet for, for doing it with me. Thank you so much for Alan, who, who works for me, who's doing a bang up, amazing, amazing job. I really appreciate him. And most of all, guys, I appreciate you. I, I appreciate you guys so much for letting me a part of your 
dog training life, for looking to me, and for interacting with uh, this and giving the, your dogs the best life you can possibly give. I really appreciate that. If you're not a member of my site, check it out, robertcabral.com. Check out my podcast on Apple, on Google, on, uh, on, on, on all, all, all networks, all, all podcast networks. And um, I'll see you guys really soon. Thanks for being here.